Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Coaching Coins. We're really trying to empower you for career and finance. Today, I have a guest, Jennifer. She's a P3 student, and she will share with us about professional involvement and as she's preparing to get into residency, and we're gonna do more of a Q&A and just really wanna share that with you guys. So with that, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Jennifer, wanna introduce yourself? student at the University of Houston College of Pharmacy. I'm about to hit my rotations. I start rotations in May, so that's exciting. And I was actually really involved in pharmacy school. I was the vice president of SSHP. I was also the, I also helped charter a small like initiative called Operation Naloxone through my College of Pharmacy. And I've also been really involved in different other organizations as well. But those are the things I'm really proud of. Awesome. How did you get involved? How did you get started? Sorry, could you repeat that? It like sure. Off. Um, how did you get started to be involved? What motivated you? Yeah. So going into pharmacy school, um, I really know that I wanted to do something more than just studying. Or besides studying, I also wanted to keep myself busy because I was moving here from Dallas. I didn't really have any friends in Houston and my family was also in Dallas. So I kind of immersed myself into organizations and that's when I found things that I was passionate about. And I found um, that I really liked helping other people. And that meant like one, like helping out the community through health fairs, but I also really loved being in positions where I was like a professional development chair that helped uh, like organize and host events for like mock interviews or like um, events for uh, like P1s and P2s. So I really got involved in organizations by one, just you know, joining an organization when I first hit pharmacy school and just really getting involved and in joining all the health fairs as I can, or trying to go to as many health fairs as I can go to or as attending as many events or any speaker held events or seminars that was going on at my school. How many organizations were you involved in and how many would you recommend? Um, so this is, I guess it depends on person to person and how much you can handle. I think I took on a lot of organizations. I joined a lot of organizations and I could have gone like, I guess, lower in the number of organizations. I've really looked into this and I've looked into residencies and I've looked into what Residency, residencies want to see. I've found some like articles saying that it doesn't matter how many organizations you join. So really what that told me was if I'm going to join an organization, like, it's not going to be something to put off on a list to get into residency. It's something I'm joining because I'm passionate about it and I'm interested in the organization. So I would say max three to four if you really are interested and passionate about an organization or really just get yourself immersed in one or two organizations that you truly believe in or if you uh, resonate with their like um their quote um what they believe in or whatever that organization stands for then really join because you f truly feel passionate about the organization and really that will help you grow as a person not necessarily the amount of organizations you join yes and i have to echo that um it's true that you don't have to join like very 10 organizations. You actually, when we look for applicant, um, it's more important on the amount of time you invested in leadership roles and what you have been involved in and what value you've been added to the organization. Um, you know, for me, I learned it, Jennifer is way smarter than I am. Um, when I started out pharmacy school, I joined like five, six different organizations and I was stretched very thin. I was a member of everything and because I was interested in everything and that was not the way to go. Um, so I, Jennifer is very wise, listen to her advice. Uh, you know, as you start, just really invest in one or two, three, max, I would say three as a P1 because it's a very tough curriculum and you want to get to know your, your classmates, but also you want to spend time, you know, making sure that you're doing, getting good grades and all that good stuff too. So, and then once you invested in an organization that you felt very passionate, you can assume more leadership roles and getting more involved, a committee chair, um, those types of things. And you don't have to be 
president, vice president, can be committee members, organizational chair, anything to help volunteer coordinator, anything to sh help and show that you're invested in the or organizations and holding some leadership. Um, so how, how do you go above and beyond your roles? Um, before you got into vice presidency role, like what, what did you do? Yeah, so um, I, I mean, I figured out you shouldn't join too many organizations the hard way too. Um, my two one year, I joined way too many. And then by my second year, that's when I truly decided that um, if I'm gonna join an organization, it's because I'm truly, I guess, immersed in the organization and I really wanna make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so my second year of pharmacy school, I helped create an initiative in an organization called uh, Operation Naloxone. And with that, we were able to like reach out to the community and donate naloxone and educate everyone on proper use of how to administer naloxone and how to recognize opioid overdoses. And something that I really did that I felt like went above and beyond was besides just finding locations to set sites in, uh, we helped, um, like we appeared on magazines and we also were able to set a website to really advertise our organization. And that was before we even I mean, this little initiative, we still don't have a webmaster, but, um, you know, I didn't really know how to become, a, I really didn't understand how becoming a webmaster worked. So it was just me and my friends who are also officers just trying to figure out how to work through web pages to really sell our, you know, initiative so more people will start presenting or, or and more people would start being more interested in presenting. And so I think really finding a position that, you really like, or even if it's a community outreach chair and you're hosting health fairs, um, maybe make a list of what that the requirements are of that position. So yes, you have to host health fairs or you have to host events, but maybe you can go above and beyond and think of what are some events that are outside of the box that you have never done before, or what are some things that like, maybe you can create a long lasting, I guess, relationship with uh, a school that way you have a guaranteed health fair site for the next years to come and so with that I was like doing things that are required of your role but also a little bit extra I feel like that's how you go above and beyond like understanding what your role does but also giving more to that role so as you prepare to <laughs> assume this leadership vice presidency role um, what did you do uh, um, particularly to help you prepare for the speeches, get elected for the position, everything else under the sun. Okay, so different organizations host, for us, different organizations host like, uh, mock interviews and mock preparation speeches. And so with that, I really, uh, I attended a lot of these mock speeches or like, speech candidacy workshops and I've also attended a lot of the mock interviews so that I could better prepare myself to be I guess just like a better speaker in general just because I get really flustered and so with that I think one reaching out to friends I reached out to so many people to ask for help with my speech and just to make sure that one I knew every single word and every single line on that PowerPoint because if anything went crazy in my head, like, or if any, like, word went differently, I feel like I would panic. But if I had the whole speech memorized, then it wouldn't be as bad. And so um, it was really just a lot of preparation and reaching out. And if your school doesn't have, like, mock interviews and mock uh, speech workshops, then really just reach out to your professors. I, I had mock interviews with some of my professors who were my mentors. And you can even have a mock like presentation to them too. They really do love helping students. So if there isn't an opening for it, you should create one. I love it. I think that's, you nail it right there. Um, the other thing too is I would recommend to look at beyond the school college of pharmacy, there is actually local state and national organization that you can be involved with in terms of committee work that you can be involved with as a student. So um, don't limit yourself to just what is involved at school. Like let's say you apply and you don't get whatever position is because it is competitive and there are other folks that want it. Um, think outside the box, you know, there are other organizations outside of the College of Pharmacy that you can be involved 
and stay involved and just get your foot in the door. Um, like for myself, I started with the uh, ASHP, which is the uh, national organizations to our like local SSHP. And, and then I start getting involved with our state chapter, which is TSHP, which is the Texas chapter. And then we have a local chapter that's Gulf Coast, which I wasn't involved as a student as much because honestly, I didn't even know they exist until of course I finished or while I was in residency. So these are all great um, opportunities to get involved with um, beyond the school setting. Um, let's see what else I wanna ask about. I think for involvement, that's pretty much it. And I think one thing Jennifer pointed out is that if there is not an organization that you feel passionate towards, create one. Um, it may, may take a little bit more work on your part, but if you're really that passionate, then find some other individuals, two or three, to form a, a board and then ask a professor to be your advocate and or your faculty advisor is what they call it, and then create one for your own. So. Don't let the current organizations be the limitations to your involvement. Um, stay involved, stay engaged, because that's how you really prepare yourself for residency, because that's what we're going to look at, um, which transitions very well, because I know Jennifer has some question about residency, so I'm going to let her ask me those questions, and I can answer them so I can learn. Yeah, so my questions are, which residency do you think I should apply for? Should I go for a local? or a state one? Should I go to mid-year and apply for things that are a little bit further out of Houston? So um, this answer, I'm going to say it depends, right? Like, for example, I think you really have to reflect and self-assess what are your goals um, in terms of getting a residency and how flexible are you to stay locally or are you willing to be moved to a different state? I would say the more flexible you are um, when you're not geographically limited, the more chance of you getting a residency, um, right? It's a numbers game. You apply to 10, you apply to 20. When you apply to 10, your chance might be lowered if you apply to 20. And then in terms of where, if you apply to a very competitive market, like the metro area, for example, in Houston, Texas, um, Again, it's very concentrated versus if you go out and apply to Baytown, Texas, um, or if you apply to somewhere where it's not as populated, or if you apply to a non-traditional program like the Indian Health Service, that is a very competitive program, but it's also in, in certain aspect. Because, for example, I would be interested in the Indian Health Service, but there's none in Texas, so you have to go out of state. So I think... There are a lot of different residency programs out there, but you just have to ask yourself, what are those residency programs you're interested in? Is it something that you're flexible? Financially, are you able to move out? If you have a family, uh, dependents, kids, um, that means that it's not just you that be affected, it will also be your spouse, your significant others. So think about all those factors. Um, some other thing too is the weather, right? For me, I took that into account. Um, can you survive in the snow for a year or can you even two years if you do a PGY2? So quality of life wise, like those are all things that you want to take into account. Um, so of course, locally, if you're geographically limited, you can't apply, but that means your chance of getting in may be less if you ap apply out of state. Um, for more programs. So those are all things to consider. Financially, mentally, emotionally, and then financially from a cost of interviewings, right? Like you have to fly to various areas to interview. So um, AK that costs money, hotel, all that stuff. So it, there's a lot to take into when you decide what you want to apply. And what I would recommend is no more than 10 programs. I know for med schools, they do 20, um, sometimes more. I think for pharmacy, things not really required. I think if you limit yourself to 10, I think it's a very good chance that you're able to get into a program um, that, of your interest. And again, it depends on how you prepare for throughout the pharmacy school and rotation. Okay. And so um, applying for f residency, what factors are gonna go into my application? Just the letter of rec and the CV? So we, I honestly think it goes beyond letter of rec and CV. Um, yes, letter of rec is very important because it's essentially from peer to peer. 
like let's say I know a person X and they write beautiful strong letter rec for Jennifer I'm like okay so that gives me a point of reference um, and then of course since we don't know the candidate or all the candidates we rely on peers to tell us okay the student's good and I can tell you that it depends and that's why it's so important that you have to ask your preceptor to write you a good letter of rec because I have received letter of rec where it's literally three sentences I know Jennifer for X number of months for rotation. She did good on my rotation, recommend her. Compared to someone, I know Jennifer for the last six weeks, she did this and this and this, and she was motivated and she's involved in this and this. And I mean, there was like a long letter of rec, right? So the quality of letter of rec is important because that's what we we'll also look at. Um, your letter of intent, definitely something we we'll look at. Um, your CV, I really highlight and emphasize that you have to work on your CV. Really put everything possible. Um, we don't know you, so you have to advocate for yourself and everything that is there is your CV. That's how you advocate for yourself. Um, the first thing is, you know, every program have a scoring system. For us to standardize and make sure it's fair across for all the uh, applicants, we have a standardized uh, form, you know, if you look at GPA, involvement, leadership, research. Uh, we're basically trying to look at, are you a well-rounded individual? You may have a really like a 4.0, but you do nothing else. Then, eh, I don't know if that's some, like you may not rank as high compared to someone who's a 3.3 GPA, but she's a vice president of SSHP. She did research projects. She worked as a pharmacy technician and she da 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 so basically it's a point system and what i tell people is that once you pass a certain score and you able to get an interview you're basically half in so how you perform on your interview is very important so but before you even get to the interview it's important to get all these numbers to work in your favor so do you think Knowing that it also depends on who you know, does, do you think going to mid-year matters and actually meeting these residency like sites on site and meeting like the RPD on uh, I think, again, I go back to it depends because let's say you're geographically limited locally. Um, as far as I know, many places do have a local residency showcase that you can connect to. And since at local level, you can, you know, meet them up for coffee or uh, send them emails and just really having or, or having rotation at their hospital. So if you know that you're only going to be in, for example, Houston, Texas, mid-year might not be worth it, to be honest, it, especially you're able to go to, um, again, local showcase, meet people at the state annual seminar and really get to know them for like, again, you got to start early, like start peak. P2 year and plant the seed, right? Um, one thing I would say the only advantage if is that when you go to mid-year, you can sign up for PPS, which is a one-on-one -on -one interview at mid-year, so you can get more face time with them. But like I said, if you only do it locally, you should already know these people. You should already like meet up with them, email them, basically really get to know them at a local level. However, if you're willing to be flexible and go outside of state or, or go outside, go out of the city, then yes, I think uh, mid-year is a great avenue to really get to know as many programs there as possible in a short amount of time and being able to put the face-to-face -face, um, recognition. And kind of going back to what you're saying is like who you know versus who knows you. That's also important, right? So being able, when you meet with them, reach out, do follow up. I can't stress enough about follow up email when you meet with an individual. Say, hi, we met at mid year. I, you know, and if you're, a mid year is expensive, especially for students, okay? So I understand that fact. So I think um, going your P3 year is good. Uh, if you are able to go your P2 year, it's also good. But again, if you're not financially able to, I wouldn't stress it, but for sure, if you're thinking about national programs, then you have to go your P3 year.
what other questions you have before we close. Um, I guess just what types of residencies are there out there, like for the people who don't know? Uh, good point. Yes. Yeah. So there are so many um, residency programs out there and I probably can't list it all, but to start out with, there is just a general PGY-1, which is a general residency one year. There is a PGY-2 where you want to go uh, a little bit further and specialized. Uh, you know, critical care, infectious disease, pharmacotherapy. There are some industri uh, industry like fellowship. There are some combined PGY-1, PGY-2, master's program in pharmacy administration. There are informatics. So there are so many residency program out there. Um, I think if you have an inkling of wanting to work in the hospital and be a clinical pharmacist, I would recommend nowadays to go and get a residency. Um, they were saying, you know, one year residency equivalent to three years of experience. Um, as of manager and um, the person who on the other side of hiring, I would actually choose someone, if everything all equivalent, um, someone who is has three years of hospital experience versus someone who does a residency, I would be more likely to choose someone who did a residency. And the reason being because during residency, it gives you so many critical tools and it really sharpened um, just everything from from a attitude standpoint, from just that motivation, that desire, and just the critical thinking aspects of navigating through problems. And uh, it challenged you in so many ways, and stretched you in so many ways. And I think having a resident is just uh, like, again, from in my opinion, um, with everything else, being equal, someone has three years of hospital versus a residency one year, I would choose someone who is um, a resident. All right, so that is it. I hope you find that helpful. And if there's any comments or questions posted below, make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. Hit that button and then we'll have more awesome videos for you next time. Thank you. Until next time.